I, I'm going to ask Lee this as director of coding. Um, I imagine you see a lot of resumes. I do. What, what kind of um, <laughs> things do you see that you like, don't like um, when you see a resume? Because it, really, this is the first impression. You've never met most of these people. And um, right. what you see come across your desk is that first step. Yes, it's absolutely. That's like the introduction. It's almost like we're going out on a date and I'm screening yeah. you, right? No, <laughs> not really, but but yeah, it's it's your introduction and you want to put your, your best foot forward, as they say. And I think right away when I'm reviewing a resume, I want to see what your experience is, what your skills are. I don't want to have to search through your resume to find that. So keeping your resume short for me, everyone has their own personal style, but keeping it as short as possible for me and making sure you highlight the, um, the attributes that you have, that's going to make you a good hire is very important making sure that you have your credentials on your resume is important so that I can see that you are certified. Um, those are some of the things that I, that I look for. Make sure that you have those skills that is going to be attracting, attracting you for that position that shows that you are qualified for that position right off the bat, I think is important for me. So I don't have to search through for the information. Are there things, Lee, that you see um, that that make you instantly um, turn the resume to the side? Turn it away? Yeah. I think um, it has to be very professional. At Annie uh, mentioned the professionalism um, in her introduction. And I think that's important. I think sometimes um, applicants may not fully understand what professionalism is. It's more than just displaying your experience, your education, but it's those other things that we also look at your email address, for example, if your email address, I had one that it was something crazy, like crazy legs, CPC at gmail.com. That's, I am probably not going to hire you. We're probably not going to go, you know, going to go past that first step. So I think it's very important that you keep your resume very professional and just think about things like that. Spelling errors, Spelling is so important, um, proper spelling, right? Making sure that you don't have any misspellings on your resume, because I am thinking ahead. If I hire you and you have to send an email correspondence to a provider, are you gonna take the extra time to do a spell check to make sure that that information is going to cross correctly without spelling a grammatical error? So if you're not taking the time to do that on your resume, then chances are you're probably not gonna take the time to do it on in, internal communication. So that is something that I, I look at as well, making sure that there's no spelling errors and just making sure that you cover that professional um, array with your email address. I think that's one of the biggest hangups I see. Annie, do you have any thoughts about what Lee to share? Absolutely, yes, I've been nodding the whole time because I definitely <laughs> agree. <laughs> And I, I think that uh, I encourage people to actually create a new um, email address when they're looking for jobs, um, because that not only can that kind of focus you into, okay, I'm looking at my job emails now, but um, also it allows you to have some sort of form of your name in your email address. So many of them are already taken and sometimes there's you know, a 10 digit number, but that's you know, the way that it goes. And, and if you have, um, like she said, you know, party girl, uh, CPC um, in Los Angeles or something like that, then someone's going to have to type that out. I always say that. Think of someone having to type in that email address and what that's going to do. Um, but also it can um, avoid you getting um, any job emails lost in the shuffle of Old Navy or DSW or, or what have you. Um, and uh, also, I mean, it wasn't too long ago that I was calling coders for jobs, but um, I feel like uh, maybe people don't call as much anymore. Maybe email truly is like the first step, but um, I had a lot of people who would answer the phone and say, um, well, and I'd say, you know, is, is this Amy Smith? And they'd say, well, who's this? You know, and it's, it's little things like that. I mean, no one wants to have a telemarketer or speak to a telemarketer. I can relate, but um, it's little things like that, that, um, you know, not only is your resume, your first impression, but then that's kind of going into, okay, this person looks like a good hire. 
let's give them a call. And um, then when you're greeted with that, I mean, it's something you can get past, of course, I would think, but it's not the greatest way to start out, um, you know, the way that you want to talk to someone or, or having a, an unprofessional outgoing message in your voicemail if you do let the call go to voicemail. Um, so yes, absolutely. In that same vein, just the, those are basic things that, um, that people don't think about, you know, they're basic and yet people say, well, this is my email address. Of course, I'm just going to put my email address, but you need to think about, you know, what that looks like going out into the world to someone who's never met you before. Thanks, Sandy. Victoria Mall, she says, I've seen applicants uh, for auditing roles that have their resumes tossed for spelling errors. So if you're applying for an auditing role and you're supposed to be diligent in finding um, uh, errors, um, that could be a problem. HIPAA is a big thing. HIPAA. Why? Why? That, and it, it, it bothers me to death, but you're in healthcare, you should know how to spell HIPAA. And I think maybe I would say 15 to 20% of resumes that I review, HIPAA is spelled incorrectly. I, wow. I definitely would agree. And it's an easy mistake to make. And, and um, also have someone, I would suggest maybe have someone else look at your resume because if you keep looking at it, you're not going to see them. You, you've already sure. typed the typo, you know? So, but when someone else even glances at it, it'll come up right away. Um, they don't need to be, you know, an editor or, you know, professional review or anything like that. Just literally read over it, make sure everything makes sense. Um, I, there's no um, shame in that. Um, the oh, professional okay. writers rely on their teammates and uh, other writers okay. to review their work before it goes live. So Absolutely. please get, get another set of eyes on, on your resume before, before you do that.